Hi, I'm Matt from Freeform Fabrication, product specialist here at Freeform Fabrication. Today, I'm going to show you how to engrave a skull pendant. Uh, the reason I'm doing this is it's my dad's 60th birthday and I couldn't figure out what to get him, so I thought, why don't I make something? Um, he likes skull things, um, so that's why I'm just... So I, I'm not a designer so i tend to borrow let's say from the internet now in this case i have a subscription to shutterstock so i have access to all thousands and thousands of of vectors that i can use so i've deleted those other two because i, I wanted this um this one here so um first thing we want to check is to see how it's going to hatch just have a look and just see how we how we hatch so that's pretty cool, that looks pretty good. Quite happy with that. Um, so then what I'm gonna do, because what I want to have is I want a really deep background and aspects of the skull to be really, really deep. But what I don't want, oh, hang on, let's have a look at that. Ah, so have a look at this. So that's not ideal, it's not gonna engrave properly um, with it being like that, and that's fine. It's a pretty good vector though, so we'll be able to fix this. So I'm gonna try initially um, and you'll see I, I try these things in the uh, hatching tips video is I'm going to try and untick cross hatching Sometime, uh, sometimes cross hatching can confuse the software a little bit so let's try that first uh, so it's still still not quite right you can see the lines coming across on that, that there that shouldn't be a problem what we'll try to do also is get rid of all calc. Sometimes all calc can confuse the software as well. Let's try. Aha! There we go. So by trying to force the software to engrave it as, like in one wipe, it it stopped it working properly. Basically, so um, by trying to force it to go up in one and across in one and do it all as one, it, it didn't quite. It didn't like it basically. So what I'm going to try and do now and see, I'm going to see if crosshatch will, will work again. Um, it's always nice to try and use crosshatch to avoid any of those lines coming in. So let's have a look again. Let's zoom out. So that looks pretty good. I don't see any issues there at all. So yeah, to go back to where we were. Um, so I'm looking to do a background. Um, on this so aspects of the, the background is going to be really deep with aspects of the skull protruding forward so um, what I need is a circle um, probably slightly smaller like that and what I want is a bit of a little a little border on the pendant as well so we're looking like something like that maybe slightly Oh, actually, that's pretty good. So, next thing I want to do is try and hatch that background. So, um, the reason I've selected this outside circle, because when I go to hatch, I don't want this selected. Um, because that is just going to be the outline um, of the pendant. So, what I'm going to do is highlight everything and then untick the outside circle, which will mean I can then hatch the rest. So let's have a look how that comes out. Yeah, that looks pretty cool. So all of the blue parts are going to be engraved nice and deep. And the rest is going to be left left protruding. I think that's going to come out really nicely. Um, so the next thing I want to do on here is I want to make the loop for the pendant. So um, I'm not sure what he's going to do with it, whether he's going to wear it um, as something, it's going to be two mil brass, it's going to be big, it's going to be heavy. So it might just be something that ends up on the mantle, but you know, I'm not too worried about what happens to it. I just think he's going to like the, the design, he likes this sort of thing. So, I'm going to then bring that here. I've gone for about three mil, but I have a feeling we're going to be making that a little bit bigger. I think, that, yeah, that's right. So we'll copy and paste it, that can be the inside one, and 
I'll do the outside now. You'll notice I press C. I always center everything and then bring it up. It's so much easier. If you center things, you know they're perfectly lined up. And I do that by pressing C. Um, If you hold control when you're moving things, it will also keep the your axis. You can see how I can't move that to the left there. So, maybe I might make that two and a half. We want it nice and thick because of how heavy it's going to be. So, why you center it. It's a lot easier just to center it and then move it all up. So once that's in position, what I need to do is join that to the outside circle. So I'm going to use plastic and weld. So select this, press weld and select it onto there and that's going to join those together spot on so now I'm going to select these um, just so I don't want to select the hatch right now I'm only selecting the cutting part. So I'm going to go to, I'm actually going to make my own um, setting for the two mil that isn't quite, isn't on here yet. And I will set this on any engraver that comes up as well. So we just want to change this now. And we're going to go and cut two mil. So cutting 100% power always need not 1000% power, 100% power. Um, that's always going to be the case. You're always going to need that power. Um, and I'm just going to go back to the cut 1.2 and have a look at some of the settings because we're going to use roughly the same. Um, so we're going to slow it right down. The reason for slowing it down is that 100% power stays on the metal for longer. Um, and then 40 frequency should be about right as well. So. Um, the other thing to look at, so when you're cutting, wobble is the most important setting, and it's this one here. What that does, instead of just doing an outline on the metal, what that does is turns it into little circles, almost like a drill bit, and that's how it's going to engrave that, um, sorry, cut that depth. Um, so the diameter is fine, the distance is where I might use a bit more. The higher that distance is, the easier it cuts. You may lose a bit more material and that's fine. Um, but that's where you get the sort of the, the, the good cutting um, with slightly higher distance. So I'm going to do 0.12 on that diameter and we're going to do 0.05 on that. So yeah, I will lose slightly more material, but since it's brass, it's not a massive problem for me. Um, but if you want something to be cut really fine and lose very little material, you have that slightly lower on that distance. So, you will see on the cut two mil here, I've set 50 loops. Um, that's uh, probably less than what it'll end up doing. Cutting two mil does use a fair amount of power and takes a decent amount of time, um, of course, but it is very thick metal, so you would expect that. Um, but it's uh, impressive for a machine like this, the Apex 50 can cut two mil, it's a, it's a really, really impressive machine. So that leaves me now with the, um, the hatch. So you can see now, a conserv I've gone straight to 50 counts, which is when cross hatch, that means 100 passes. Um, this is 
just a good estimate of how what I think is going to look really impressive, basically. Because um, I, I want it to be engraved sort of like, if it's half a mil deep, um, that'll be really good. Um, but that it does take time. Like, this is, this is not a quick job. Um, it is going to take some time. Uh, so just to prepare you for that, for, then I'm going to save the file. Now I'm going to get my bit of brass and we are going to just preview position and everything, really. Um, so in here, just putting that into the clamp and let's just see what size it is. So the size we are looking at right now is sort of 55 by 50 mil. So that's kind of what I was expecting, to be honest. So the only thing we need to do really here is preview just this outside shape. So if we show contour, we can see exactly where it's going to engrave. I'm very happy with that size. I think it's gonna be about right for what I want. So yeah, I'm just gonna position that in a good place. We don't wanna waste all that brass. So I'm gonna move it over to move it over to the left hand side whilst I preview that's in position now we move it down to a bottom corner as well again we just want to make sure we're not wasting all of that material really that's the main thing so I'm going to get that in position there and now it's a case of um, pressing that mark button and let's see what we come up with. Mm -hmm. 